Harry just came out in Japan so let's talk about my first impressions and some of the thoughts that I had for deck building. This deck seems pretty amazing out of the box so let's talk about it. I was on stream with Different Fight last Tuesday when they revealed the last two cards for the Harry deck set and we covered a bunch. We created our own little gimmicky deck and uh, pretty much the world created the rest of the decks within 24 hours. So we're going to go through all the ideas and just kind of what I ended up, you know, building towards the end. A completely vastly different deck from what I built on Different Fight Stream. So let's get into it. So this is the deck list that I crafted with Different Fight while we were on his stream. Uh, this deck is very peace reliant and it wasn't really something that we kind of thought that was good at the time because we were so uh i guess tunnel visioned on pale moon and how it operates in premium right so this deck essentially right you're playing two shout applause dragon which is essentially a uh falcratia light so it's a 23k attacker that allows you to put a card from drop into soul uh you're playing two of the harry grade three to be able to stride into your grade four harry Three Flying Manticore, pretty much one of the best, if not the best combo piece in your deck, allows you to extend before your Vanguard attack, or essentially um, before calling extra from Soul during the battle phase. We run one Togue. Togue is essentially a third copy of Shadow Applause, or the fourth copy of Manticore, essentially when you Soul it in. Uh, and then we play four Tiskar. Tiskar allows you to hard draw your cards in the early to mid game. It's also an EB3 free 5k shield, which is really strong. Uh, we play four on Netta. Or Netta is an early game piece where you can just drop it with essentially no drawback. Search top five, put a card into soul. And when you intercept or guard with it, you get to soul charge one, filling your soul, which is quite good. You play one Selfish Engraver. Selfish Engraver is one of your counter charge pieces. This deck does eat a lot of counter blast. So having the 10 soul requirement after battle, it attacks. It shoves itself into soul to counter charge one, which is, you know, pretty neat. Uh, you play four Dark Side Princess, uh, pretty much your main big buffer attacker, your big power attacker. Um, she's a 20k base on first stride, plus five from the crest, which is 25, and then becomes a 35k base on your second stride going forward because she's 25 base plus the 10 from the crest. You play two Clockwise Dragon, which essentially. Uh, Energy Blast 3 to refund any card that you discard for Stride. Uh, pretty strong, uh, especially if you only see one Manticore. You dish the Manticore, you draw one, and you get the Manticore back from Clockwise. You play one Amethyst, uh, on-demand counter charge, which is good, and then 20k shield whenever you need it. We play a 3-1 of the Perfect Guards, uh, which is pretty much normal, just like any deck in the format. Uh, maybe other than like Shoujo Doji, because I'm pretty sure Shoujo Doji likes to run four Stealth PGs. Uh, you play three, two Masquerade Bunny and then three Cutie Paratrooper. Masquerade Bunny is essentially uh, your searcher for Harry to be able to stride into the Harry Grade 4. And it's just a nice, you know, 5k that you can use to stride if you don't have a Grade 3 in hand. Cutie Paratrooper is essentially uh, one, two, or three extra copies of every card in Soul. So at any point in the game, you're able to essentially put a card um, into Soul and then call something else that isn't the name of the card that you put in. In terms of the triggers, you play 4 heal, 8 crit, 3 fronts. Fronts are ideal in this deck because draws essentially deck you out. I play the purple OT for the meantime. Uh, there is debate to play the blue OT. I think the purple OT is really good because at any point in the game, it's a free heal, uh, giving you a plus 1 and a multi-attack, I guess. So it can extend another attack. Um, but mainly, it's for the heal. Healing down at any point in the game may just give you one extra turn, which is pretty much what this deck um, needs sometimes. You're playing Forbidol because you're playing two different grade threes. So Forbidol capitalizes on uh, calling out the Shout Applause and the Flying Manticore, which essentially um, solves any of your multi attack issues in the early game. It, pretty much if you draw this, like it's an auto win button, right? Uh, we spoke about it before, but we played the 3-1 split in PGs and Elementaria, really, really strong. Uh, if you buy the Harry deck set, you just slap every single G unit that you find in the deck um, into your deck list and you call out a day. Your first stride is Lunatech, top 5, put 1 into Soul, call a unit out, gains plus 5. 
Um, the Harry Grade 4 is on attack, come loss 1, put 2 of your rearguards into soul, uh, call 2 out with different names, put 2 of your opponent's rearguards into soul, and then at the end of turn you put the 2 cards that you called back into your soul, which procs your crest skill. So initially this was our list, and 24 hours rolled around, and there was a lot of talk on social media, obviously, um, you know, with two big hype sets, uh, there's bound to be discussion. and. I pondered upon a deck um, by Miltai, so uh, Taedream. The deck is quite interesting. So you're essentially playing a Gungaram engine where pretty much you max out on pretty much all of the other stuff, right? So three Harry, four Manticore, four Darkside Princess. You also play four Falcratia. Falcratia has two roles. Essentially, it is an early game 30k especially if you're playing heavy grade threes in your deck to stride. So pretty much it's a 25, 25k uh, hitter plus five from the crest is 30, uh, which makes it really awkward for your opponent to guard if they don't play fonts in their deck. Um, having this on your first stride is really strong, especially it synergizes well with the Gungaram engine because essentially what you want to do with Gungaram is uh, build up your soul, soul blast three to draw one multiple times uh, and pretty much empty your soul and just draw a bunch, right? Uh, you only really save your key pieces like, you know, your Manticore, like one copy of Manticore or one copy of Darkside Princess, um, and then pretty much everything else you can just kind of ditch, right? The deck doesn't use any soul threshold cards like Selfish Engraver or anything like that. So it actually works really, really well, right? Uh, for Car Cutie Paratrooper, because again, you know, anything in your soul is valuable. So pretty much at any point on demand, you can call out the card from soul. Um, and it really works with Alcatia because it can fish anything from the drop zone, put it back into Soul, and then you have, you know, an on-demand counter charge with Amethyst or something like that. This deck also plays Radiance Caliburn uh, instead of Forbidol because you don't run the Shout Applause. Uh, Radiance Caliburn is essentially an on-demand counter charge and a plus one Soul, as well as if you are trying to synergize with the Gungaram engine in the early to mid game, um, it can act as a draw two as well. So um, ideally, you know, in the mid to early game, you're pretty much, oh sorry, early to mid game, you're pretty much, you know, drawing a bunch um, and then stabilizing, right? Going through one of your opponent's turns or two of your opponent's turns. Um, and then pretty much throughout those two turns, you're power scaling because of the crest. So yeah, this is a pretty interesting build. Uh, although this deck doesn't use energy efficiently enough, um, I think Miltai did say that uh, you're pretty much getting to first stride, energy blast seven to draw one. Um, so I thought, you know what, I had a thought of, about this deck and the framework looks pretty good, right? And I kind of wanted to build on this deck, uh, printed a bunch of proxies and tested the deck. It was actually quite formidable, but I felt that the use of energy could be better. So I essentially developed this. Um, you guys would have seen it on X if you guys follow me on there. But essentially, I slimmed down the lines of some of the um, less necessary cards um, in the deck to be able to fit three Tizkar. Tizkar allows you to essentially, again, I explained it before, uh, early drawing um, from your Ditching to Ride deck. Um, you know, it's a free EB3 to draw one um, 5k shield. So I slimmed the lines on the Grade 3 Harry by one, uh, Servant Falcratia by one, and the Masquerade Bunny by one. And then that allowed me to fit in uh, three Tiskar. Now there is a debate where you can slim down one Dark Lord Prin uh, Dark Side Princess here and increase Servant Falcratia to four because essentially the role of Falcratia you need to see it earlier than you do with Dark Side Princess. Um, and then pretty much this deck um, mimics the way that Miltai played his deck or you know constructed his deck uh, with the Radiance Caliburn and the Gongaram engine. So yeah, this is pretty much the final bit of it. And then I also saw another interesting build also by Miltai. He posted it a couple days after. And this is quite a strange build. And it looks very like the deck that I built with Chris. Um, different fight. So you're playing Shadow Pulse and Flying Manticore. You're playing a bunch of Togues in this list because Togue essentially gets your Flying Manticore and your Shout Applause Dragon. But more importantly, it actually gets you this grade three blitz order. And what does this blitz order do? Pretty much from soul, you can activate it by energy blasting three and it becomes a 15K shield. And pretty much if you use it, 
then the card goes back to the bottom of the deck. Why is this good is because Togue can find it from deck. So if you, you know, ditch Togue, put it into the drop zone, and then you use the shout applause to put Togue into soul, Togue can then tutor the blitz order that went to the bottom of deck uh, when you previously used it. So it's a quite quite an interesting build. Uh, this build only runs one Amethyst, still playing the Gungram engine, and I think it's pretty formidable. But I feel that, you know, if you're playing, you know, double grade threes, I think four is pretty good. But then again, you're slimming down the lines. You're not even playing um, Dark Side Princess. You're just purely focusing on Servant Farcratia with a heavy grade three line to essentially discard for your stride. But otherwise, everything else kind of kind of stays the same. So yeah, my initial thoughts, I think Harry is a very dynamics, flexible deck. It is a deck that you can run a bunch of techs and the longer the, you know, the series goes on, more cards get developed um, and generics get better than Harry naturally gets better. Um, but for the meantime, I think the uh, Gungaram engine is very strong and it this is probably not as strong as like you know chronojet or shunui when it first came out and you know thank god for that um because those two decks were insanely strong right completely power crept every other deck in the format um but having a really formidable draw engine and a really strong finisher in grade four harry is really really strong um i think Probably it needs one more thing. I don't know what that thing is. Maybe like a slight early game. And then this deck would probably be one of the best decks in the format. Um, but otherwise, I think there is a lot of creativity, you know, going around on social media at the moment. Um, there's a lot of different builds. I know that there are builds with like, um, well, obviously these and then uh, clockwise um, using the engine that uh, is very similar to the Chronager engine using the Tis card, the Clockwise. There's like Upstream Dragon as well. Uh, Upstream can call, you know, your Brick Gardener. There's a lot of, you know, creativity and bright ideas out there. And it's not to say, you know, this is the perfect build. Uh, this is the way to go. It's just, you know, initial builds. And as the meta develops, then we'll see more of this in the future so yeah that's pretty much it for my first impressions and i guess some of the deck ideas that i found on x on social media and pretty much crafted some of the decks um to kind of put everything together i think there's a lot of potential in this deck um so yeah uh, give it a try and i think there's a lot of hype with this and night rose so results will show eventually right so yeah, if you guys liked this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of Harry and Night Rose, the deck set. Uh, if you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.